Praise the Lord. I want everybody to come on in the house. Shake that hand in front of you. Hug that neck and let's come on and get started. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And what do we come to do tonight? I heard praise God and what else? Worship. Is worship good for us? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to welcome everybody that's here and if they've got the video on the online family. God is so good. Even when you don't understand what's going on sometimes, He's still good. Praise the Lord. How I many know He's good? He's awesome. I want us to pray together. Take somebody by the hand beside of you. How I many's got a prayer request by the uplifted hand? Thank you, Jesus. And there's several people in the church that's sick too. Please remember them. If you were sick, you'd want them praying for you. Praise the Lord. So remember them. I know I talked to Buddy, Liz, but different ones in the church, and there's others I don't know that's probably sick. Remember them, and Darlene's been sick. So remember some of these people in prayer when you pray. It's so easy to pray what we need, but let's pray for others. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that's entered into this sanctuary. But God, I pray, God, that you'll protect our sanctuary, which is us, to lift up praises unto you tonight. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that looked beyond our fault and just saw our need. I thank you, Lord, so much for your love and that when your blood was spilt, it spilt on me. I thank you, Lord, because you love us, oh, my Lord, unconditionally. I thank you for everyone that's here, but, Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, enter into this place. Help us to release the praises of God. You said you would have it, the praises of your people. Every name, everything that's needed, Lord, miracles or whatever's needed, God, we lift it up before. We lift new day up before you tonight, Lord. Finish and complete the work that's begun here, Lord. I thank you for doing that. Thank you, Lord. Bless those that give. Allow your presence just to flow through this place, Lord. And we'll give you glory and we'll give you honor. We love you tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. He's playing mercy, so y'all gonna have to help me sing it. Oh, mercy, rewrote my life. God's mercy, rewrote my life. God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, I could have fallen, my soul was cast down. But God's mercy rewrote my life. And now the song goes, I lost my song. How many of you ever felt like you lost your song? Didn't know where you was going, where was you headed? But there's something about God. It said grace. Somebody say grace. Grace will place you right where you belong. And there's something. I about cry every time I hear something about mercy. Because I look at the lives that's represented here and in my own life. The journey that I've been on. And it was God's mercy that kept me. That kept me and kept you in his mercy and in his grace and his love. I want you to sing this like you really mean it because mercy and grace is really what rewrote your life. I can't write your life. God rewrote your life. God's got a plan for your life. And we just got to hear what thus saith the Lord and walk therein. Let's sing it like we mean it. Well, God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, yes, Lord. God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, I could have fallen. My soul was cast down. But God's mercy rewrote my life. One more time, everybody. 
everybody singing. Well, God's mercy rewrote my life. God, I love you, Lord. God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, I could have fallen. My soul was cast down. But God's mercy, I feel Jesus when I sing that song. Come on, lift up your voices one time. Well, God's mercy rewrote my life. God, I thank you for that. God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, I could have fallen. My soul was cast down. But God's mercy rewrote my life. I got to do it one more time. Well, God's mercy, it'll rewrite your life oh you got a story to tell mercy rewrote my life oh I could have fallen my soul was cast down because mercy in this place would give you and you've hurt them or you abused them or you did things to them or you denied them would give you something good instead of something bad who in here sometimes when you're cast down and beat down and you're not doing what you're supposed to do people will beat you down but you know what God will lift you back up where you belong I feel the presence of God. And I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes we take for granted the mercy and the presence of the Almighty God. And Pastor John's been preaching about worship and praise. If there's ever been a time that the church world needs to lift up Jesus and worship Him for who He is and recognize who He really is and recognize what He really has done in our life, even though you may feel like you're going through the belly of hell, you're still standing on your two feet, able to lift up your hands and lift up Jesus and thank you for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. It's time the body of the Lord shake themselves and awaken ourselves and say, God, I'm going to lift you up regardless. This journey might get hard sometimes, but I'm going to keep on traveling. I'm going to keep on walking because you know what? When you put your hand in the hand of the man, that can calm the waters. If you put your hand in the man, that can calm your storms. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. You know what I've learned? My storms make me who I am. My battles make me who I am. I'm sorry, Bobby, but i got to feel this in my spirit. Praise the Lord. God wants to do something in the body of the Lord, but he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us, church. And I'm not just talking about near day. I'm talking about the church world. Thank you. We can talk all day what God can do, but we got to manifest what God can do. My God, he's gave us power to overcome death, hell, and the grave. Somebody needs to clap your hands for King Jesus. I mean, clap them good and praise him tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm going to try to be quiet. But mercy, rewrote your life, Steve Packett. Come on, everybody, one more time. Well, God's mercy rewrote my life. God, I thank you for it. God's mercy rewrote my life. Oh, I. Another great big hand of love. I love when Judy says to me, I'm not going to have that microphone long. I know the Lord's getting ready to do something. <laughs> Let's go.
Now go hug a neighbor. Go shake hands, go hug your neighbor, go hug somebody across the sanctuary. What I don't want you to do is get, to get really comfortable in your seat tonight. I want you to be able to move freely. I want you to obey the Lord. I want you to love on the people around you. I want you to have a re revelation from God. So be free. worship night.
because I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, now all is at rest, because I am my school tonight um, and I was just thinking about church and growing up and the, the monumental people that were in our lives and, and what a part that they played and I'm going to share a little bit of that in a second but I just want you to as we go into the Thanksgiving season to remember that you have a lot to be thankful for because the world wants to tell us that we're doing without and that everything bad is going on and yeah we have attacks of the enemy but no weapon formed against us is going to prosper we have got so much more to thank God for than we do to complain about. And you know what? Complaining does not honor God anyway. So let's give him everything that we've got.
about your voice? Is it really about the things that you're concerned about all the time? Um, and he, let me stop for a second. Um, he told me to, to sit back and just really reflect on what worship looked like. Um, the people that I knew that were godly in my life. And um, so I'm going to share some examples. And I just really want you to think about if somebody's watching your life, do they see worship? And I'm not talking about singing and I'm not talking about um, raising your hands. I'm not talking about the shouting. Um, but it's so much more than that. So here's some examples. Um, Roger and Rose Rife were my babysitters from the time that I was eight months old. She was a Wesleyan preacher's wife. He was the preacher. Um, this couple came, became more than just babysitters to me. They were instrumental in teaching me who Jesus was. I stayed with them a lot. Roger was a humble man of few words, but when he did speak, his words were always kind. In the Wesleyan denomination, pastors have to move from church to church a lot. Usually they don't serve at a church for a long period of time. Over time, I watched church people ridicule Roger and Rose for so many things. There were people who were downright mean to him or her. They may have visited people. They may not have visited uh, people who were thought that they should be visited in the right amount of time. They may not have made the hospital visits the way that they thought they would. Rose's hair uh, might not have looked like a preacher's wife's hair should have looked, some thought. I kid you not, I, they heard this a few times and other petty things. But here's the difference. I never once heard them speak poorly about the people that they served and loved. In the face of ridicule, they worshipped. They sought God, and they prayed fervently for people that may not see things the way they did. Were they perfect? Nope. But they were compassionate, they always had a soft answer, and they were kind. To me, this is a life of worship. My great-grandmother, I mean, my grandmother Catherine was very poor, but she was intentional to show love to everyone. She was going to make sure that if you were with her, that you were fed. She would purpose to cook someone's favorite meals, and she tried to feed someone all day long. She thought of others before she thought of herself. When I was a little girl, she would collect scrap materials to make Barbie clothes. Even though I had a lot of Barbies and a lot of Barbie, Barbie accessories, those clothes were always my favorite because they were made with love. She didn't have much, but whatever she had, she would make something out of it to give it to someone else. She loved making others feel special. She preferred others over herself because serving others brought her joy. To me, this is a sign of a life of worship. My Aunt Alita worked in a school cafeteria. She purposed to know all of the names of the children in the school where she worked. She also knew which of the kids didn't have lunch money day after day. She created an account that she put money into for the kids that didn't have lunch money. When she was asked about it by her boss, she was told she could not do that. And she said, if I'm wrong by not letting children go hungry, then I will just have to be wrong. The children are not going to go hungry on my watch. She was also the one that taught me that when my dad was in the hospital fighting for his life, that I could pray for him, even though I wasn't living right at the time because God cared about me. Deep down, she knew that if I opened the lines of communication with the Lord, it would start a relationship. I was living with Philip at the time, outside of marriage, and she didn't fuss at me about it. 
I knew it was wrong. But instead, she spoke life into me. To me, this is a life of worship. My great-grandmother lived a humble life. <clears throat> but if you mention her name around people that ever attended church with her, they remember her. Not because she was blind, but because she loved the Lord and she loved people. I would overhear her talking to the Lord, asking him daily to examine her heart, to let her know if there was any sin within her, because she didn't want to live a life that wasn't pleasing to him. She lived in West Virginia, and when my dad and uncles would go in, to West Virginia, they would take friends to ride four-wheelers and go hunting. Most of the people drank, and frankly, who knew what else they might have been doing. People would ask my great-grandmother, doesn't it bother you when all these people come back here? And she would respond, no, honey. I love them, and I'm glad to spend time with them. Everyone respected her and knew her faith in the Lord. Even the burliest of roughnecks would not cuss around her, and they wouldn't say anything bad around her because they felt her love and they loved her back. She would stay up all hours of the night praying for people because she said, I might be the only person praying for them. She was worried about people's souls. She wasn't one of the people to say that she was praying and not. She went to war for the people that she cared about. To me, this is a sign of a life of worship. My question to all of us is this. If a child were to watch our lives, would they see a genuine life of worship? Not people who play Christian music and listen to preaching. Would they see people who, when they're ridiculed, continue to show compassion to the ones who are hurting them, like Roger and Rose? Would they see someone prefer others over themselves, even if it meant that they may do without? Would they see someone who's willing to advocate for what's right, even if it means to lose their job? Would they see someone who shows a broken sinner that they are just as important to God as the people who sit beside them every Sunday? Would they see someone who loves so deeply that even sinners know that their relationship with the Lord is genuine and the unbelievers choose to respect the God that they serve because of the example that is being set before them? Would they see someone who cries out to God on behalf of others because they may be the only ones praying? <clears throat> For this worship night, let's not make it about singing songs. Let's seek the Lord and ask him, is my life a life of worship that is bringing honor to you? Do I have hidden or not so hidden offenses that I need to let go of? Am I struggling with heartbreak that has turned into anger that's causing a root of bitterness to grow up in my heart that's choking out my true worship? Am I afraid that God is not gonna come through for me and have I been holding back from him? Am I struggling to celebrate for others because I feel like God's overlooking me? Do I see that person that gets on my nerves more than anyone else, a life that God values? <laughs> Let's be honest, y'all. <laughs> What's holding you, me, us, back from having a genuine life of worship and truly honoring God with all that we have? If that child is watching your life, and I promise that they are, what, what do they see? If that unbeliever that God has placed in your path is watching your life, and I promise you that they are, what do they see? What does God see? Jesus showed us what worship looked like in all seasons of life. Matthew 3, I'm sorry, Matthew 5, 3 and 16. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile against you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. 
For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. But you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that may, they may see your good works and give glory to God your Father who is in heaven. So the question again is, when the children around you are watching your life, do they see a life of worship? Because kids hold on to those things. I'm an old lady now, okay? I still, mm -mm, I still remember those nights that Roger prayed on his knees, and he had really bad help praying for the people who just might not have understood. I still remember my great-grandma loving on people and praying. Kids remember. They think about it. The unbeliever that you meet, they're going to know that there's something a little different about you, and they're going to want it. They might not know it's Jesus at first, but they're going to know that they want whatever you have. So as we worship, as we sing, ponder those things in your heart. What does God see? What do people see? What do you see? And what do we need to change? <clears throat> Let's stand and worship.
I just have to say that um, Tori and I were talking one day and um, she was talking about how when the congregation starts singing, it's overwhelming up here. Like, <laughs> it is one of the most beautiful sounds that you could ever possibly hear. And I can't imagine what it sounds like to the Lord. If it's that beautiful here, if the worship is that sweet, how sweet it must be to our Savior's ear when we sing together in unity of how good he is and how worthy he is. I got 
joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow. worship them with y'all.
John, do you have a word? <laughs> Avery says you always got a word. You have a word? I mean, he's enjoying worship night tonight. Praise the Lord. This is an awesome time in the Lord. I'm just over here just enjoying the presence of the Lord because, remember, we're speaking his love language. And that doesn't mean we have to shout. That doesn't mean we have to run. That doesn't mean we have to dance. It just means we enter into his presence. And that's what I'm enjoying tonight is the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm enjoying this. Let's continue to worship the Lord tonight, church. Prayers. He answers prayers. 
Y'all, the presence of the Lord in this place tonight is so sweet. If you have a need, please don't leave without seeking the Lord's face. But I hope you're like me, and I hope that every worry that you've had has just melted in his presence tonight. Just being in his presence there's fullness of joy, right? Like, that's what the scripture says, and it's it's true. <laughs> there's no other words to describe when you're truly worshiping him. It's like he wraps you right up in his arms, and he says that I've got you, and you're okay. Every worry melts away, and you're just there with him in his presence. I don't know how many people are here tonight, but it's just you and the Lord. Work those things out. Sit at his feet. Rest in his arms. And just let him love on you as you love on him. Because not only are we singing praises to our God, but the word says in Zephaniah that he sings and rejoices over us. So we're just singing back and forth to each other. We're saying, God, we love you. You're great. You're worthy. And he's saying, my child, I love you. I've got you. I love you. I've got you. And it's this beautiful exchange that I can't quite fathom. That I try to find the words to sing to him. And somehow the creator of all the universe, with me and my job, finds, finds it in his heart to sing peace and joy and calm over me I can't understand it and I don't deserve it but that's the kind of God that we serve
two more songs that are scheduled if you have a need make your way to the altar I don't have any more words so I'm not gonna
this last song together without music. Amazing grace, how sweet that saved a wretch like me. How once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first Toils and snares I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace shall lead me home. Amazing grace, how sweet. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, 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 praise God. Thank you, Lord. Pastor John, you close us out. Wow, what a presence tonight. Praise the Lord. I didn't know Bobby knew that many old songs. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm, how many have enjoyed the presence of the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Always thankful for worship night. Uh, gives us a chance to give worship as a special night. So it's always a great night. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed this night. Uh, how many appreciate the praise team for the worship night that they brought tonight? <laughs> praise the Lord. Mm, my Lord. Mm. All right, come here. 